Greetings, YouTube! This is Longbow. Well, it seems I've fallen out of favor with uh, Colonel Aldous Valor, because I had the audacity to suggest that uh, Sony was a superior gaming s system to Nintendo, and, well, Aldous has informed me that this is not the case. Um, anyway, rather than being forced to undergo uh, minion reprogramming or having to sweep the Smashtorium with a uh, toothbrush, I've decided I'm going to win back his favor by doing some theistic ponage. Fatalists, YouTubers, internet people. Hi. People are greedy. Period. You know, people do videos just because they know that uh, the person in the title is popular to get views. You'll notice I didn't put your name in my title. I'd like to see a new evolution in internet theological debate. YouTube has set the precedent with the ponage, embarrassment, and mocking. I'd like to see Fatal Error Network going more in the direction of um, philosophy, history, research. I can understand why you'd want to go with the philosophy angle, because, well, the theistic uh, front doesn't hold up too well when it comes to uh, science or logic. I don't think the research is going to work out too well for you. The more you dig into it, the more you're going to learn that this is nonsense. And the truth. So, this is my very first Hey Atheists hey! video on the Fatal Error Network, which I am no doubtably infamous for on YouTube. And this is what I want to say is this. Hey Atheist, you do realize that this is a book, right? Book? <laughs> yes, it is just a book. So is this just a book? Yeah, atheists are familiar with books. So we even write them. Isaac Asimov, Mark Twain, Arthur C. Clarke, it's literature. Literature. And there are people that believe that this is inspired by a being beyond our three dimensions. Yes, yeah, sadly many people do think that. I am not among them. I think it was inspired by some ignorant uh, Iron and Bronze Age shepherds and warlords and kings. And what it says in here is what's important. So it tells you what's important. For instance, like how it's it's bad and sinful to masturbate, but uh, if you want to have drunken, incestuous sex with your two daughters in a filthy cave, well, that's just fine. Or right, you can't pull out during sex, but if you want to go and get yourself some sex slaves, all you got to do is uh, go up to the city, uh, city and make them an offer of peace and which if they do go for your offer of peace by the way you enslave them and if they don't go for your offer of peace you murder the entire village or city and then you uh, take all their stuff and take their young virgin daughters as sex slaves and uh, what other important things does this book tell us uh, Oh yeah, if you work on a Sunday, you should be stoned to death, because that's just the right thing to do. Or another thing that's important, um... It's okay to rape girls, as long as you're rich enough to be able to pay the 50 shekels to buy her from her father. Yeah, that's important knowledge. Well, unless she's engaged, in which case you're, you're not just messing with a lowly second-class uh, citizen female, you're messing with a man's property, so if you... 
rape a married woman, oh, you're getting stoned to death. And she is too because you defiled her. Not what men have used what it says in here for. Most atheism is caused by lack of evidence. Well, true, there is a lack of evidence. That is one reason why many people become atheists. Another is uh, they're able to think logically. Cause and effect. Maybe you can see, okay, there's a cause here, so the effect should be this. If we don't see the effect, then maybe the cause is not what we thought it was. Like, cause. For instance, Jesus says that all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. As I've said before in a couple videos, this is a lie. So the cause, all things you say in prayer, believing you will receive, should lead us to believe, logically, that anything you pray for, if you're a believer, you will get. But that is not the case. So that tells you Jesus is not a god, Jesus is a liar. Maybe the book is flawed when it comes to what Jesus actually said. Well, lack of evidence is certainly a factor when it comes to atheism, because there is no evidence for a god. But another thing you can look at is the fact that humanity has invented thousands of gods throughout its history. Not just the one. Yeah, we invented Jehovah, we also invented Odin, and we invented Mars, and we invented uh, Amun-Ra. It's a myth. This book shows you where to find it. It does. But here's the problem. You can't hear it from someone else, especially some jackass on TV trying to sell you some oil or something, some kind of Christ oil. The word you're looking for there is snake oil. Much like these faith healers you see on TV. Lying to people, endangering their lives. Or some kind of faith healing, or some kind of other BS. But you do realize that the whole idea of faith healing is in the Bible, right? And that's the problem. There's too much of that. Because people are stupid. People are stupid. And this is a lot of work. Ask anybody in seminary school how easy it is. Hmm? And listen to them. Listen to them explain to you what they have to learn to better understand what is written in this book. Understandably, I can quite easily comprehend how it could be a lot of work to do mental backflips and know which portions of the Bible you're supposed to take literally and which are supposed to be figurative, what's allegory, what's actual story. Because if you take it all as literal, you're either a fundy or you can spot the flaws. Flaw, 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 flaw. So my question is, do you, is it the book or the God who wrote the book that you don't believe in? Or is it the man that used this book for greed? Yes, yes, and yes. I don't agree with the, the writings in this book. If it was written by an all-powerful creator of the universe who created us, it would not contain any of this garbage about heaven and hell and fucking what animals you're allowed to eat. There'd be, like, friggin' quantum physics in there, and a lot more mature concept of civilization than this barbaric civilization that's detailed in the Bible. Well, I don't agree with the book. It's obviously flawed in many ways. It's factually inaccurate. It's contradictory. There's no reason to believe it's true. Secondly, Yes, I don't believe in the alleged God that quote-unquote wrote the Bible. And thirdly, yes, the things that greedy men do and 
order to, uh, you know, perpetuate, continue their greedy, lusty desires, well, that's a hint. That's, uh, what do you call it? A symptom of what belief in this kind of thing can do. If you can justify ripping people off and taking their money and pretending to heal them and lying to them, based on the word of God, you got a big problem. Like, you should not be able to justify this insanity if the book were true. Like, if the book were true, the people would really be healed, but they're not. For power. If you really asked yourself that question, if you really separated the deeds of man from what this book actually says... Snakes can talk. Can you? Are you willing to? Are you willing to humble yourself and say, you know what, I really don't know anything about the Bible. Well, I've read the Bible and I'm not going to humble myself before the pathetic deity that allegedly wrote it. It's a barbaric book. Our present day morality is far superior to the morality outlined in the Bible. Like, for instance, you and I both know it's wrong to rape, it's wrong to take slaves, but the Bible is fine with both of those things. It even tells you where to get your slaves, and how to properly beat your slaves, and, uh, you know, if a father sells his daughter into slavery, she doesn't go free as a normal male slave would, because, you know, women are inferior. Women aren't allowed to speak in church, because that's an abomination. Homosexuality is an abomination. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Maybe I should check out what it's trying to tell me before I say I don't believe. It's trying to tell me that I'm a lowly priest of dirt who's a fool and I'm gonna burn forever in eternity because God likes torturing people. Because there's so much religious oppression and abuses. It's un... I mean, it's unfathomable. And yet we see it every day. And I understand that and I sympathize with you and it saddens me. Because the things that you see that are negative about organizations using this book, not churches, organizations using this book as a tool to sell something. Not churches. Churches are organizations. They're using the book to get money out of you so that they can continue on with their free ride. They're extorting money out of you. You're buying a product. Salvation. Jesus saving you from God. There's a difference between a church and an organization. Not as much difference as you think. Using a tool to sell something. I'll say it again, they're selling you salvation. That's where we need to start defining better. In our minds, in our hearts. My heart decides nothing, it is a pump. Blood goes in, blood comes out. So for you YouTubers, video responses will be set on automatic approval because I'm IG. I thank you, IG. That's very kind of you. Uh, I'm curious about the name, uh, Inventor Gorilla. Uh, you acknowledge the theory of evolution that we are apes? So again, people, you have to separate yourself from what's actually written and the, the message in this book, which is actually 66 books. Interesting little tidbit is if you cut out the little bit uh, from the King James Bible that was added afterwards, it actually also comes up to 666 verses. Woo! It's really not just one, okay? It's 66 different books put together. 
So is it what's in here that you have a problem with? Yes, it's barbaric and wrong. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that if it's context and translation, um, that's really not the issue. Because those big things, those big points with me were solved immediately. By taking it out of context that God asked Abraham to commit human sacrifice in his name? No, I don't think I am. My problem was what other men were doing with this book. Actually, people have used this book to justify all kinds of atrocities. I got a problem with that too. Like the Roman Catholic Church justifies, uh raping boys. That's horrible. And, uh, yeah, they should be held accountable. Making me not be, want to be a part of that organization. And that's why I'm no longer a Roman Catholic or a Christian. That company. It's a horrible thing what's happened to this. It, it, it's a testament to the greed of mankind. Now I don't understand you're saying that people are using the book and that's the testament to greed. The book itself is a testament to the greed of mankind. It was not written by a god, it was written by people in power. Uh, for instance, the meek shall inherit the earth. You think that's really how it works? If you want something, you gotta fight for it. Being meek will give you... You'll inherit the boot of oppression. That's all. It tells you to, uh, respect your leaders as though you, they were God. Like Adolf Hitler. You're supposed to treat him like he's appointed by God. It tells you to respect your master's slaves because whether they're good or evil, they own your ass. It's a book written to keep the meek and ignorant, meek and ignorant, so that they can be easily manipulated. It thrives on gullibility and ignorance, while at the same time, shunning knowledge and wisdom. He fools the wise with their craftiness. Mm, yeah. Thanks for watching. And thank you for allowing me to vent some atheistic, uh, stuff. Cheers!